Um, hey, this is uh, Group A. Myself, Ken, Louie, Carrie, and Mary. I worked on this presentation uh, for the same uh, article that you guys read. A little bit of a different perspective here. Uh, so first, just a very high level uh, summary, which you guys already know about, I'm sure. Um, this was a DNP project that was focused in a primary care center that was looking to do a weight loss program. It was a 12 week intensive program, which involved interviews. Uh, uh, three times peop the, the people would come in and have measurements performed on them as far as you know uh, their weight, your blood pressure, some other questionnaires as well. And uh, there was uh, 14 that were uh, recruited um, by kind of convenience for those that had a high BMI over 30 and ended up only being a sample size of 10, which uh, was non-diverse and there was only one Latino and they were all females. Um, so just some information that is, is worth uh, sharing as, as DNP scholars. Uh, after reading this, you're gonna find out there's still more research that needs to be done uh, for best interventions for weight loss in the primary care setting. Uh, and one thing uh, that is clear after reading this is that a 12 month intervention program is probably not long enough. So probably you need to have a longer program to have significant changes. Uh, and then lastly, these aspects uh, can inform the development of evidence-based interventions for weight loss in primary care leading to better health care outcomes for patients. <clears throat> Some other uh, important things to point out is that uh, the data collection technique. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, in the next slide. Uh, but it's really important when you're looking at data to make sure you, you track it well. So you have patient A, what were their findings? You have patient B, what were their findings? You have patient C, what were their findings? Because as you're tracking them throughout the whole research project, you want to make sure that you are not losing the data. What I sometimes see is that when people do DMP projects or any projects in the hospital, is that they will lose I patient identifiers. And that's a very bad thing that can happen because you can't directly link um, you know what has happened and I think that might have been what happened in this article um, anyways uh, the study sample size is, is important for a study this one only had a 10 which isn't very strong um, and then you know the compatibility between the study design and the data collection tools should be considered for a successful data collection and, and th what I mean by that is um, oh yeah, before I get that here we go these are the things that we measured uh, patients weight uh, their BMI their waist circumference, they had a nutritional assessment done, and they were checked on their life satisfaction um, uh, as well, both pre throughout the um, intervention and at the end. <clears throat> so uh, the measures that we'll really analyze are the, those around uh, kind of your weight. So what they did is they, they took everyone's weight at the beginning. Let's say they had 10 people, and they, they weighed them all, and then they averaged it, they got the mean. So, so they just added up all the people and divided it by 10 and then they came up with, okay, well the average weight of the group at the beginning is 196, right? And then at the end, they did the same thing. They just added everyone's weight up and divided it by 10 and found out that their weight is now 189. Okay, so yeah, so on average, the group lost 6.5 pounds. That, that is completely mathematically correct but it is so wrong to to do to look at it this way. Uh, so uh, let me show you why it's wrong. So here, here's just an example of a breakdown that I just made hypothetically. And in here, I broke it down by patients. I didn't just do you know the average. Well, I did the average to show it, but patient A, B, C, and D, just four patients. Let's say patients A, they first weighed 150, patient B, 180, 170, 180. So now these patients pre-weight, that was their weight. On average, they were at 170. Standard deviation is 14. Now, post weight, this one's 155, 182, 172, 150. And you'll see if you just subtract these, this person actually gained five pounds, this person gained two pounds, this person gained two pounds, and this one was an outlier, they lost 30 pounds. Okay, so on average, this is the average, they went from a group weight of 170 to a group weight of 164. So on average, they lost five pounds. That's true, they did. But the reality of it is three of the four people gained weight. So, you know, you can't tell if that's what happened here, or if it didn't. You can't. You can't tell with with the information here. Um, the other thing that's missing is there's no standard deviation for the difference for the means for for um, their their weight. You might be able to find a little bit more information if you had that, but you don't. So <clears throat> they did this for everything. They did this for the weight, the BMI, the waist circumference, and systolic blood pressure. Fundamentally, that's just flawed. So the important things that when you're doing a data analysis, make sure that you have itemized identifiers of who's who so you can keep track of who is is what's happening to each person 
All right, so one of the strengths of this was that it did have interrelated multifaceted measures uh, to kind of look at overall health, which, which was good, you know, which I mentioned earlier here, the, the weight, the BMI, weight circumference, they did the nutritional assessment and life satisfaction. They did all this at the different stages, which, which is good, instead of just looking at one singular thing. So I would say that was a strength. Um, <clears throat> these measures were obtained through verbal communications and written questionnaires and utilized telephone session, uh, sessions to be collected. Um, however, also there's a little bit of weakness for that because one of the things that they did was use participated related outcome measures and those can easily be all altered. Um, and people have questioned the validity of that, of that kind of tool. Uh, so Beck could have uh, measured those outcomes through objective data collection during week one and week 12. Um, Beck decided to obtain blood pressure data on its own instead of collecting the other three data in person. Uh, and if Beck really wanted to use uh, the participant-related outcome measures, she could have used the approach by Etchen, uh, where uh, the authors examined the response of the participants as it relates to their behavior and weight loss. So strategies to avoid, when you're doing data collection, make sure you keep it linked to a patient identifier so you can track it appropriately. So you don't just lump all the data and just take a group average before and after. Um, and then when you're doing sample sizes, make sure you kind of, I mean, sometimes you do have to do convenient sample sizing, but that can result in a very small sample size, which is in here. And here are the references, I'll post those up.